So I've got another one of these Fantech timers to repair. This one's got an interesting fault. It actually looks like it's in reasonable good condition. I've actually pulled the battery cover off and there's just some corrosion around this battery terminal here. It's all like flaky here. And it's even had a little bit in the side, of the, like the screw hole here. The screw was quite crunchy when I was unscrewing it, so that's quite interesting. So I'm not quite sure if it's liquid damage or whether it's battery. It doesn't look severe enough to be battery, but it is definitely corroded. Based on where it is, it likely is battery, but it could just be water damage. Anyway, I'll show you the fault. So I'll turn it on. Top display works per normal. Right, so that's normal. That works. Bottom display, it's got nothing on it. You can see there's one line which is kind of half eliminated, you can see it there. It's semi-active, it's got power. Go set up and push some buttons. Nothing there. I'll just push buttons. It's doing something. Let me just get back out of here because I'm changing settings, so I don't want to change anything. All right, nothing there. But before, when I did this, I actually had a cursor pop up over here. I'm guessing this corrosion over here has got onto the main board and damaged something. So let's pull it apart and have a close look. So there's some definite battery leakage going on here. Look at the back of the terminal here. See how crunchy that is. And also the front of that one's got a little bit on it. You can see it there. And you've got some staining on the board. A little bit of staining just up here. You can see it's actually run down inside the case. Over here, there's some crunching the here going on. And uh, obviously around that terminal a little bit as well. So yep, it's had a battery left in it and it's leaked. The usual problem. That's why you should never ever leave batteries in these things. So let's take the whole board out and see what's on the other side. Well, I found some issues. Let me just fix one of them before I forget about it. The actual antenna here, it's the antenna mount just there. It's got a slightly dodgy solder joint on it, so I'm just going to fix that before I forget about it. And then I'll move on to the other actual real issue, which is obviously the display. So a bit of fresh solder on that. So I'll make sure it's got a decent solder joint onto that pad. Just freshen that up. It's probably not going to take much. I just want to be sure it's okay because it didn't look wonderful. So I'll give that a clean up with some cleaner and then we'll carry on. So I'll clean up a pad over here as well because it's got a via but it doesn't look like it's particularly good. Just to help that out a little bit. Now what I've actually found on the top side, that initially it looks okay but then I look a bit closer. R2 there, it's got a bit of an issue. It's got corrosion on it. And it's also isolated as I'm guessing this is water has got in through this button. Dripped off the button, gone to the board. So that's my guess that it's actually water damage that's done that one. So it could be just water because it's not like really green, the corrosion on these. It's not really green, it is probably just water damage. I don't know, it's a bit hard to tell from that one. I mean, it's not, you usually see green when you've got battery damage, and it's not really like that. It means a little bit there, but it's hardly anything. So I think it probably is just water. Anyway, so look around the board here and see what else, anything else we can see here. Now this section here is quite important, this is the boost regulator. So I guess the battery's voltage, which is about 3 volts or so, and boosts up to 5 volts to run the MPU and the display and stuff. So we have to make sure this output voltage is about, looking about right, but the circuitry looks okay in itself. So I'm looking around so I can see any more corrosion anywhere. I might have to pull that display out to be sure there's nothing under there. I mean maybe that display itself is actually bad. Displays can fail. But the processor here, can't really see anything around there, it looks spotless really. So, yeah, it was, you know, just got a little bit of corrosion just there, I mean that could be all it is. But what we have here, you've got these lines come across here, all these parallel lines, these go to the display. It could be the display itself has got wet and it's damaged it, and damaged the electronics on the back of the board. I must have the display out to find out. Okay, I'll keep looking. I'll clean that resistor up, I'll check the voltages, see what we're getting. So it's 5 volt output there, yep, getting exactly 5 volts, so that's looking alright. On the processor, that's fine. Over here, that's fine as well. Let's check on the actual display, there's a 5 volts over here, there we go, it's 5 volts there as well. And I think that's negative and positive here. Yep, it is, so the display's getting proper power, 5 volt rail looks good. So, as far as why that display is not going, currently a little bit of a mystery. I've cleaned that resistor up, I reflowed it and I've cleaned up the corrosion of the battery terminals and that sort of stuff and all that bit's done now but still no display so let's dig a bit deeper so I pulled the other display off as well just check underneath it and it seems okay now that's not saying for the faint of heart 
there's a huge risk of damaging the display trying to get these out. I can do it because I've got spares. I have brand new ones, so if I break it, I can replace it. I would say if you're working on one of these things, don't take one out unless you know you can replace it. Anyway, I've also taken the switch off because I noticed there's a bit of discoloration when this trace is over here, right where that corrosion was on that resistor. You can see that the trace there is corroded, just under there. The solder mask is gone. And also, that one just there is also looking a bit dodgy. So I think, although the solder mask is intact, I think it's actually somehow got underneath it. Maybe it's travelled down under the switch or something. I don't know, maybe there's a scratch on the ball just here and it's travelled down. So maybe that's all the issue is, is that these traces here are a bit dodgy. And even this one here has got a little bit of a mark on it, see that? So I think I might need to scrape these back and redo those. And there's also a little bit just there. See, that was it's a bit of dirt. A bit of dirt has gone. So, yeah, I think we've got an issue. Maybe that's the tr issue here is this trace. We'll clean it up. And on a closer inspection, it's a good thing I did take this display here off. Just on this IC, just here, there is a tiny little bit of corrosion between those legs. Tiniest little bit. So that does need cleaning up. So it's a good thing I did take that display off. It did need it. Still weak on these traces. You can see I'm taking them back with my fiberglass brush. And I can see it looks like a break there, so yeah. Well, so I finished with a fiberglass brush, and there you go. You can actually see the break in the trace now. So, yep, yeah, that was gone. Once I was started getting down to there, it, it just disappeared. So, that was the problem. And the bottom trace here is looking a little suspect. I'll just run some solder over that. I put a wire across that one there. Um, I'll just run solder across these other ones I've exposed, and that should be good enough for those. So, I just peeled the sticker off because I can see there's some corrosion right on the edge of the sticker. So, I pulled that off and I'll fix those up. And there's a couple of wires underneath it which I've touched up as well. Especially down here by the battery terminals. Those were looking a little bit iffy, so I'll just touch those up with the soldering iron. I'm going to put some solder mask over these now, clean them up, then uh, I'll put the sticker back on. Once right, so the sticker back on that side, solder mask is done. Now to do this side, you can see repair I've done there. I've put solder on those traces there, put a little wire across that broken one, and now I'm going to put some solder mask on those as well. All right, so I'll just remove the header here just in case there's any corrosion underneath it. But it looked okay. I mean, it could have been something underneath it, but I've given it a clean anyway. I'm just going to resolder it on again now. Bit of flux on there, and uh, I should reattach that. I've already put two pins on this to hold it in place. Now I've got to try and get the heat to soak through the board so that the solder can go to the pads on the opposite side. Now I've got a couple of pins down there done. Let's get back to the top. And try and do the same thing. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm going to put plenty of solder on. I do tend to put be too much on, really. I'm always very generous with my solder application. So I'll try and get the solder through to the other side so it's attached to the pads on the opposite side of the board, not just relying on the wires or the through holes, or the plated through holes I should say. Okay, I think I missed the ones in the middle there. down each side up. That look alright. Still a bit of flux here. I'll, I'll worry about it later on maybe. Alright, let's uh, see the display back on again see if it works. Well, I'll pop the batteries back in. Let's try it. Let's just try and lever this so it's got contact all the holes if I can. I'll try that. Hey, there we go. Working. Right. So what I'll do is I'll reposition this and um, remount it I think. 
get that positioned correctly, solder it back on, hopefully it still goes then. If not, I can always change the display. Um, I've ruled out any other problems on the board. Actually dismantled the display, actually took the whole thing apart, took the bezel off this, took all the glass out and cleaned it all up as well. Did all that off camera. Just a couple of little zipper strips to clean up really, it's not really a big deal, but and obviously the, the gold plated pads on here which it contacts to just in case any corrosion but the actual display itself I haven't actually seen any problems with it's looked absolutely perfect I haven't seen any kind of corrosion or anything I'd be suspicious about I'm fairly sure the display itself is actually okay but I gave it a clean anyway reattach this and we'll see if it still goes after that all right solder the other side on and hopefully it will still work after this might have to do, go over this a couple of times to get it right First one's going to get it started, second one's to actually do it properly. Moment of truth, let's put some batteries back in. Yay, working. Brilliant. I'll put the button back in again and start reassembling it fully. Well it's back together again, one last test, still working. Excellent, so I'm happy with that. That was a tough repair that one, took a bit of effort, took quite a while, but anyway it's done. Don't forget to click like if you like the video, subscribe up there if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel, help me to buy bits of the test gear to fix and things like that to do videos about, instead of these things, and other videos to watch down below both on the screen here and in the description below. I've got some playlists of all sorts of things. If you're interested in these Polaris timers or the FarmTech timing equipment, I've done lots of repairs on these things and lots of videos about them, so maybe you want to go and check out that playlist. I'll probably link it in up there in the corner or something. Catch you later.